Pakistan's largest province, Baluchistan, may not mean much to many people. But among the experts, it's known as a sectarian terrorism hotbed. And some U.S. lawmakers are even calling for its independence. Archie's Gainet Chichikan explains the region and its importance. Baluchistan. You may have never heard of it, or maybe caught a glimpse of it in a Hollywood blockbuster, but the place is a hot destination for intelligence services from around the globe. Looking at its location, it's part of Pakistan, bordering Afghanistan and Iran, you may think, well, no surprise, dangerous place. But apart from being a dangerous place, Baluchistan is of big geopolitical importance, where major world powers have interests. Baluchistan is sitting at the crossroads of oil and gas pipelines coming from Central Asia, Iran, and elsewhere. The Iran-Pakistan pipeline, the Turkmenistan-Afghanistan-Pakistan-India uh, pipeline, not to mention that Baluchistan itself has its energy resources. Besides, its water port, and it's uh, right here, is the access point of Chinese for Chinese commercial shipping to the Indian Ocean and on to Africa. But all the violence and instability there doesn't make it an easy place for business. Investigative journalist Eric Dreitzer tells me some world powers might be interested in keeping it that way. First of all, we have uh, various indigenous terrorist organizations that uh, operate inside of Balochistan, the Baloch Liberation Army, Jundala, the Baloch Republican Army, Lashkari Taiba, just to name a few. Jundala is an organization that for decades has been focused on destabilization of Iran. Now, uh, the confluence of these various terrorist organizations, of course, is uh, not coincidental. This has a direct relation uh, to the interests of the United States and the Western powers vis a blocking the Chinese, destabilizing Pakistan, and uh, part of waging their covert war against Iran in hopes of not just encircling that country, but to uh, collapse it from outside. The U.S. government denies having any connection with Jundala and Baluch terrorist organizations. Although CIA memos leaked recently say the Israeli Mossad recruited Jundala members, quote, under the nose of U.S. intelligence officers, end of quote. As far as other terrorist groups, like the Baluch Liberation Front, there are a few people in U.S. Congress who expressed readiness to support the separation of Baluchistan from Pakistan, like Dana Rohrbacher from the House of Representatives Committee on Foreign Affairs. Any bad... Anything that's coming up right now that the Pakistanis don't like about our attitude is being caused by actions taken by their government. As far as who could benefit from instability in Baluchistan, most experts say it's extremists of all kinds. Mainly uh, Al-Qaeda and its affiliates, uh, and as well as the, the Taliban. They certainly have an interest in maintaining instability. But some also see Baluchistan as a key square on the geopolitical chessboard. The United States knows they cannot compete with China economically or industrially, so they have to stunt China's development through these various subversive tactics. They're willing to engage with various terrorist networks that they've had for many, many years, if not decades, in order to try to make the Chinese stall in their economic development. So according to you, pipe wars are real. and. Creating instability is one of the instruments to gain advantage, but wouldn't it backfire, the terror, violence, instability? Um, could it backfire in terms of terrorist um, uh, reciprocation against the United States? This is entirely possible, but that didn't prevent the United States in the late 1970s from financing and supporting the Mujahideen against the Soviets. Allegations that some global powers may be stoking violence in a place like Baluchistan for their geopolitical interests are quite disturbing and raises the question whether pipeline wars are a reality. In Washington, I'm Ganesh Chekhan.